Yeah, so we on film right now. Yo, introduce yourself, man. Yo, my name is Def Rock, Bull Mass, you know what I'm saying? Early Pioneer. Yeah. Mass One. For real, if y'all seen the uh, lyrical Cypher series interview. That's my man right there, you know. For, first Cypher he ever seen. Yep, yep. He was in that Cypher. So. Man, you know, you asked me about a Cypher. Back in the days, we were more like, you know, your group would go on and do their thing. So the Cypher came later, you know what I mean? A little bit. But I, but I can't remember the old early days, you know, with uh, Lyrical would have to be in the first Cypher that I was in. That's most definite. So you know I. Def Rock, we got a little ahead of ourselves here, right? Let's get some of your history for New England hip hop. You can started take your call. Old Mass in um, 1984. Probably started rhyming then. 83, I started writing. Uh, Lowell Mass, you know, at the time we were in a group called EMCs, Energetic Masters of Ceremony. And, uh, you know, we were doing big things in Lowell at the time. Opened up for Run DMC as well as Lyrical was on that bill as well, you know. But that's my man from way back, you know. So I, I would say that you've, since 84 is like, I mean, that's when I moved to New Hampshire and stuff like that. So you've been part of hip hop in New England since hip hop's been in New England, basically, is right. what you're saying here. <laughs> How, what, what were the... 88, 96 like through for you? 88 is the era of terror, man. You know, like, I say 87, 88, that was my favorite shit. The beats were raw. James Brown was the, you know, everybody was sampling James, man. So you had the raw beats and lyrical skills, you know. It, it, that was a nice era. That's my favorite shit. Uh, Definitely. What was, uh, how, okay, so. What was it for me? Well, how was it for you? Yeah, how was it for you, man? We were man? running amok, dog. We were taking motherfuckers' titles everywhere we went. Every every show we went, we would out rock them, you know? Didn't matter the color skin, any of that shit. And I was catching wreck, you know what I mean? I know that for myself growing up in the 90s as like a, a white kid in hip hop, like we still got a little bit of grief, but I would assume 10 years prior to that, it was absolutely, a little bit. Absolutely, in the high school and things, you know, you'd be called like, hey, yo, you're a wannabe. You're this, you're that, you know what I mean? I grew up in uh, Shaughnessy Terrace. It's a project in Lowell, Massachusetts, you know what I mean? I actually went to a white school. It was called the Vocational uh, Technical School. So it was, it was hard for me at the time, you know, a lot of people that didn't understand hip hop at the time. And here I am painting murals and housing their cans and shit. <laughs> yeah, talking I mean, hip hop everywhere you go. Absolutely, no doubt. So now we're talking almost like, you're like 30 plus, you're almost 30 years deep in this. Like 25 years. Yeah, something yeah, close yeah. to that. What, what's changed for you? Uh, man, I think it's oversaturated a little bit now, you know what I mean? I think it's too easy, easily accessible. You know, so that you got a lot of groups that aren't the same caliber as back in the days. Back in the days, you had some really strong groups, man. I did an interview recently where a rapper had said that he thought that a good, uh, he said that everybody's first song right. is on their MySpace page. Like, their right. first song they ever recorded is on their MySpace right. page. And, right. like, right. he can't imagine, like, growing up and seeing his first song out like that, like, and pu pushing it. Imagine no MP3 players. Imagine no CD players. No DJ with a CD player. Imagine rocking over break beats cut back and forth by your man. Imagine having a group with a beatboxer in it and a DJ that actually fucking scratched and shit. I remember no, taking dances. old I remember taking old cassette like singles, right? Like I bought a box of Hanson singles when I was a kid and I popped the little tops off and just recorded my whole demo on that and that's what my demo was on was like other people's yeah. old tapes. Yeah, yeah, you know what well, I mean? That's like the thing too. We did that. You cut and paste your tape, yeah. make your little loop, rhyme over it, you know, you could edit your shit. It was a good time, man. I think hip hop back then was more creative because it was a new process. It was just coming out. People were figuring out how to do this. They were taking drum machines and figuring out how they're gonna make their shit sound right, you know, put it through an echoplex, yeah. make the snare smack, you know what I mean? Add your drum kicks and the, the beatboxer. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm all about the beatboxing, you know so the like, beatboxer, that's, that's what Cypher Series is about, the beatboxing. I would like to say a special dedication to my man, MC Cool Will. That was my beatboxer back in the days. My man Frosty, that was my MC, as well as me, Steve Nice, DJ Jerry J, DJ Active the Activator. These guys in Lowell, Massachusetts were pioneers. You know what I mean? At the time, we were like right on the cutting edge, man. So right here, this is a good good jump off for this. Let's get let's get a list of who you think New England pioneers. Let's like what's the Death Rock New England pioneer list? New England pioneers would have to include, of course, Ed OG, R.I.P. Guru. That's a, that's a blow to hip hop. RSO crew, FTI crew. That's that's Boston area. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's see. Um, in my area, we had the MOS, Masters of Sounds. 
Um, and so, JP, um, damn it, man, it was too many. I'll, uh, my man Donald D, he used to take his turntables out in the projects. That was the first time I ever seen a DJ with a mic in the projects rocking the motherfucking pot. My DJ, uh, my man, DJ Crazy C. Incredible guys that have totally been forgotten. Graffiti artist, Swami, Mace One, my man, Spray One, rest in peace. This is the Low Foundation, Shaughnessy Terrace. The other side of town was called North Common. They had the Super Deaf Productions. These are pioneers to me, and they're from my area, you know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of constricted to that area in that time. I mean, I really like, that's what the Cyber Series to me about is like finding people like you, people who've been doing this since like I was a kid and before that even, and just trying to relay the history down to the kids, because I feel like a lot of what we lost was the oral traditions of the cypher on the street corner. Like, I used to, like I said, I've said a thousand times in the videos too, I used to go to clubs just to rap outside. Like, not to Absolutely. go, to, I would just Absolutely. go to rap, and if there was like my favorite MC and he stepped into the cypher, I used to get Incredible. geeked on that. Incredible, right? And, and it was like what I live for, and that's why I'm trying to like, find the, like some old school stuff and just but keep it current and relevant like, relevant to the kids absolutely, because absolutely and that's the only thing to do we got to keep this tradition on but we got to keep it raw too you know because I mean? the kids don't be... want it we don't want to water it down for the kids they need it to be fresh absolutely why are you motherfucking underground acts sounding like pop acts with your beats man yeah, you know what i'm saying I, I why, hate you. I why? Hate you. man we're supposed to be fighting some you know we're supposed to come with some gritty shit and break the break the monotony you know yeah instead I mean? of like added to it try to imitate a pop record and call <laughs> yourself an underground mc for real it makes sense to me for real man. yo so okay i mean I'm, I'm pushing it we're gonna we got about you know seven minutes usually here in closing what what do you def rock have to say about new england's hip-hop scene's future keep on you know what i mean keep on and um learn your history yeah you know to new, to create your future learn your history man because, you know, without people like, like Def Rock and, and the lyricals and the acrobatics and the Mr. Lifts and stuff absolutely, of the scene, absolutely. like, we're not going to really be able to, like, perpetuate it. we got to know our past and know our future. But look and, at them acts you're talking about. They're all doing the thing. They're doing the traditional style. And you can push boundaries. You can break boundaries. You can, you can make this into a new thing as well. I always liked you know? Edon a lot from Boston. He was one Incredible of my favorite. MC. Incredible, Incredible MC. Incredible MC. He was one of my personal favorites. Anybody that can juggle records and rhyme at the same time, that is skills right there. Super you know skip. I mean? J Live, like J you gotta Live, give you gotta absolutely. give it up for those those absolutely. the like. But again, like I said, it's really important for us to keep it fresh for the kids because hip hop is for the youth. And it's not just like absolutely. we can't just try to like be old guy curmudgeons and be like, oh, we own this rap music. We got to let the little kids come in and do their jerks and Absolutely. do their little dances and stuff Absolutely. like that. Embrace it, man. But none of us need to be doing the jerk, you know what I'm saying? We old men. <laughs> but, but anyways, <laughs> you know, you jerk is just a <laughs> just, simulation of the old style. Now, yeah, no, I, I feel but, you. It's like the good hey, We did the jerk, too. We did the Steve Mott. We did the Pee Wee Herman <laughs> dance. You know what I'm saying? We did the Bismarck, bro. We did the shit, too. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man. There's it's nothing new under the sun, but we, we got to keep going and being creative man and keep this shit elevating because yeah. once you stop and get stagnant then your movement is going to disappear right under your feet and then you, you know just go the and irrelevant then you're, then you're a disgruntled old mc <laughs> old pioneer motherfucker that you know that's where i'm at now but i love the movement and i would say to the people keep doing it man just make it raw yeah you know that's, what i'm saying man? i think we're gonna, we're gonna end it with that so how are we gonna make it we're gonna make this motherfucker raw yeah. in 2010. Uh, and I'm still rock. doing it. Cyber Series. Peace. We out.